All right. Welcome back to Nick Lennon's Comic Corner Classic Less Known Classics. This episode number 2484, double show number 2378, Justice League and Teen Titans. First up we have is JLA Volume 5, which collects issues from the main JLA series, 4760, JLA Heaven's Ladder, along with JLA Secret Files number 3. Your writers for these really good issues are Mark Wade, Chuck Dixon, and Scott Beatty. Artist. Okay, here we go. Brian Hitch, Mike S. Miller, Daryl Banks, Cliff Rothburn, Jage Williams III, Javier Sutherus, Phil Jimenez, Ty Templeton, Doug Minkey, Mark Pajero, and Steve Scott. Now, have I met any of these people? The writers, I have met two of these people. I've met Mark Wade and I've met Chuck Dixon. For the artist, I have only met Doug Mankey. Great guy to meet person. First one we have is Heaven's Ladder. It's more of like, a, it's just basically Mark Wade and Brian Hitch. It's this thing about this spaceship. That's the whole just of this whole one shot. It's about this spaceship. Yeah. And that's literally the whole one show with, with Brian Hitch's gorgeous artwork. I love Brian Hitch's artwork. Nothing really wrong here. Just that, well, I had this thing basically of, of basic, when I think of Brian Hitch, I think it was really bad JLA run where he apparently is, well, his J, JLA Just Think America and, of course, also his run for Justice League. The problems with his run were this. The fact when he wrote the book, we had no scenes... At their at the watchtower, none. Uh, I would say the only thing good about his one he had good character moments. Story wise, like like here here you remember if you remember his first story arc, what happened? Just like fighting random monsters for the opening story arc. The only thing I found interesting was the virus stuff, and of course legacy story arc. So now I move on to the main book per se. Now, you probably think, was Batman could cover the team? Um, not sure. So, now, okay, so, first of which, for the Justice League. Was there any new members in this book? In the JLA run. Well, in these issues in particular... There were none. Nope. Uh, no new member joined the Ross this period of time. Not really. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly. Well, yeah, that the thing with this incarnation, I think you might think is a little weird, is the fact that this lineup was kind of huge. Now, 47 comes right after... The Tower of Babel arc. Yeah, it comes like right at this is basically Yeah, it's right at the Tower of Babel. Now this is known as the this is no this, excuse me. Uh the first orc we have in here is called The Queen of Fables story arc. Mm-hmm. Queen of Fables is a three-part story arc which has the debut of uh, the Queen of Fables. Yes. This was Mark Waite's second story he did before they did uh, Reload. Thank you. Yeah, it's a quick three-part story arc which has the debut of Queen of Fables. Yeah, brand new character um, who later popped up in pages of Wonder Woman. 
yeah, basically it's all about fable stuff. That's mostly put exactly what the story arc is. It's very interesting what it is. And I appreciate the fact Wade basically just had it where it's just three issues. Not six, just three and done. Yeah, and all wraps up by 49. 50, of course, is the, well, also the cover for the trade here. Yeah, 50 is the, well, is it a standalone issue? I, I think it is. Yeah, it's just a standalone issue. Or Batman rejoins the roster that's been kicked off in issue 46. So, yeah, he's back. And fighting Dr. Destiny. Mm-hmm. Yep. And call it the next door so Man and Soup Man. That's issue 40, 51. 52, the element of surprise. Okay, the first appearance of the this weird alien species. Who only appear for about three issues. And they're from the sixth dimension. Yeah, they appear for a handful of issues and they're pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah, so they find alien species for an issue. And then... Yeah, then we have to deal with the White Martians. Oh, yeah. The White Martians are back. Yep, and they're here for these issues. Mm-hmm. Yep, they're here for majority of the remaining issues of this trade. Yeah, it's just like versus the White Martians. There's also one point one of these issues where Aquaman makes out with Wonder Woman. And it goes nowhere. Because Aquaman basically has got, well, Mira. We have Linda reunited with Wally. Yeah, and the whole thing with the with the Martians. Yeah, they're pretty much here for the main of the issues from like 55 to basically about, I think like 59, I think it is, that we deal with the White Martians. That's been versus the White Martians. Dark. Yeah, the JLA versus the White Martians. Mm -hmm. I think it's wrapped up by 50, 58, I think it is. Yeah, then we have, oh, let's have, basically, we have the Joker in this book. Because, of course, we have to have the Joker. Because, well, it's the Joker. I think, yeah, they wrapped up by 58, but 59, we have a, we have a one-shot appearance by the Joker. Because, Yeah, where he's merged with Dr. Polaris for some strange reason. I don't know why. It is by far one of those strangest things here. Yeah, it's 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 part of the Joker's last laugh stuff, so And then the last history here is a Christmas issue. Uh really fun stuff here. Thoroughly enjoy this. Give this a nine point five out of ten. That was really good. Next up we have is from Teen Titans Across the World, which collect the issues 34 through 41. Yep. So yeah, this is the one year time skip issues. Where Rob is being chastised by his own team for trial around the world with Batman. That's pretty much a big plot thread in these, in these issues. Yes. Plus, we deal with Return of the Doom Patrol. Yep. Of course, the storyline is called 
Teen Titans, New Titans. Yeah, we also deal with the return of Brother of Evil, where, get this, the brain has got himself a clone body. And apparently also, this leads us up with the Doom Patrol, where, like, the Chief is basically acting like a complete jerk to everybody. I'm like, wait. Yeah, this is like, I, I kind of forgot about this, because... Now, I knew Doom Patrol to show up here. I, I kind of forgot the fact Jeff Johns had written him just a jerk here, as he did over in the pages of Justice League. Yeah. So, basically, what this issue is, is basically bringing back in the Doom Patrol into proper continuity. Basically, this is, this is one year later, mostly put in a way Jeff Johns has basically undone the retcon done by John Byrne. Or simply put, the Doom Patrol has not been just showing up just recently. That was a Jeff, that was John Byrne retcon. It was probably an unpopular retcon. So let's just basically have it where we return. We remember the remember the fact that that the chief was responsible for the actions that caused the creation of Doom Patrol, and apparently everybody forgives him for it. Yep, Mento, of course, is a big part of the storyline because. At one point, she's basically berating Beast Boy for daring to stand up to him. And Mento basically tells him, shut up, Chief. I'm in charge. If you dare talk to my son, he's like, if you dare talk to my son like that, I'll basically beat you up. And he's like, I'll be in my lab. <laughs> yep. And of course, basically, yeah, this is basically the switch up in Volume 4. But would this lead somewhere, per se? Kind of, yes, this later on would lead into a new Doom Patrol book. Okay, if you're really curious, like, how long before, because this came, like, right after the cancellation of the previous Doom Patrol book, like, not even just a couple years. Yeah, the John Byrne book... Was only in just 04. This is 06. Yeah, and pretty much in the way. This would lead into. Uh, later on to. Uh, basically appearance over in the pages of. Come on, seriously. Yeah, the whole thing with... And there's also a return here, a Ravenger. In these issues. Yes. Yeah, the whole thing with the... Uh, Doom Patrol, that gets wrapped up by issue 36. Yeah, that's kind of in a way where it wraps up here. Actually, we're like... 37. Yeah, 37, which... Uh, this is a very famous issue, 37. Why? Because 37 is the first appearance of a popular character from Young Justice. 37 is the debut of Miss Martian. Yep. And she's a creation of Jeff Johns. Who has appeared in live action. On Supergirl. Yeah, and she appears in the conclusion of a really good story arc. Oh yeah, and here's Mentos Alpha he wore this run. He basically berates the chief. Oh yeah, and then we see Rose Wilson in a bikini. Oh yeah, and you, she uses Kid Devil's firepower to light a cigarette. And I see this, I'm like, damn Rose, you are hot. Woohoo. And then we see Miss Marsha show up. Yep, this is her. In her debut, being shy, but yeah, that is Miss Martian. Yep. So this would this would also I think lead to the debut of Z Zatara. Well, Zachary Zeta is here too, but here's the thing: he made his debut at the start of the store. So yeah, so you can think Jeff Johnson creating two characters: one who has been on TV, and the other one who hasn't. Yeah, as far as I can tell, um, I, I do not know exactly the reason for, 
like why in the world that you have Zachary is in he does appear on TV who he's a quite interesting character who also becomes basically a supporting character over in this is Hannah title just just a few years later uh, excellent title done by Paul Dini. Now, the very next story we have here is Titans Around the World, which starts with issue number 38 and includes with 41. Mostly put, it's Titans going around the world trying to recruit new people. Like, they even try to get Red Star. Now, Here's something really strange, though, about this story. Now, Tony S. Daniel had been had been drawn this book for quite a while. Yes, uh, he did leave with 38 briefly. Let's see if I can find the actual thing here. Okay, here we go. So, Tony S. Daniel... Well... He would come, he would, he, here's the thing about Tony S. Daniel. He did issues 26, 29, 31, 34, 37, which is basically the new Teen Titans. Uh, come back with 39, 40, and then do two more issues, and that was it. Really? Yes, really. That's sadly put all he would do with this book. So, I'm kind of in the way almost of this Teen Titans book. His Teen Titans run, excuse me. So, how much is it I have reviewed for him? Well, I'd say almost all of I'm looking at his work right now that he did for DC. I review almost everything he's done. The only thing I haven't reviewed yet is Count Number Percent Search for Ray Palmer, Crime Society. Uh, I think I reviewed DC University. I think I may have, uh, may have reviewed that. Um, I would say you'll have to go as Flash Fast Man Alive. And the remainder of this book in that one shot. And that's really it. Yeah, as for... Oh yeah. He did do some artwork for Justice League Volume 3. Like he did the covers. Yes, he did. Yeah, so... Basically, it's like a, a globe-trotting story arc, what this is. Mm -hmm. That's mostly put what this arc is. And I think it's a really good story arc. Mm-hmm. People claim he's dead. No, he isn't. So... Yeah, for Justice League, yeah, I've covered his very brief this issue he did for Justice League, which, yeah. <laughs> so you're probably thinking, okay, so, like, pretty much viewing these issues here, like, what exactly is left to go for him? Hmm. Okay, yeah, I've already covered that one already, so... Let's see. I'm looking at basically his interior artwork. Um, I'd say not a lot. Yeah, I'd say I've covered almost this entire run from DC. Yeah, there's a countdown issue I haven't covered yet. So there's a small few books per se for him left to go. Now, if you're going to ask me personally, have I ever met Tony S. Daniel? No, I have not. I've honestly never met the guy. I really wish I have, but I honestly haven't. But Titans of the World Story is really good. I've really enjoyed this. 
excellent of issues. I love them. Sally put Tony and Stan would do two more issues of this, and that's it. He would lead the book like gnawing after this. Uh, but here's the strange thing, though. Jeff Johns himself would also lead the book not long after he, Tony S. Daniels stopped doing the artwork for it. Yes. You're thinking, really? Yes, really. Like, if you're really curious, how many more issues are left to go for his run for Teen Titans? Six issues. No, seriously. It is six issues. Yes, there is technically, in a way, one more story arc left. Yeah, and that's the next one. Be, though there is one more trade I have here that kind of collects some stuff from. Well, I'm like, it's last issue he kind of did. But I've covered, like, a lot of stuff from both Jeff Johns and, of course, uh, Tony Asino. Yep. But yeah, uh, I give the, this trade here a, I give it a 10 out of 10. I thought it was really good. Yep, good stuff here. Uh, in the case Teen Titans Volume 3, if you're really curious, because I got the 41 out of 100 issues for this volume, I have exactly 59 left. Yep, 59. I'd say it might be pretty soon. I might be able to cap this book off. Would I review basically the first volume and... I have reviewed all, already a lot of the new, well, the trades to collect the new Teen Titans, which stop. And here's the strange thing, though, about uh, that book. The new Teen Titans book. Like, last book came out, like, not that long ago. I mean, last book basically just covered the issue 49. Yeah. It was like volume 14. And you're probably thinking, okay, how long ago did this book come out, per se, you might ask? Well, I mean, this last trade came out just a year ago. It's a shame. That this book is not finished collecting yet. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly why they have not finished collecting this book yet. But I hope they do at some point. Yes, I hope they do. When I, now, when I finish the third volume, when I review the other books, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, that's particularly in particular of you. Um, say, uh, I was going to but it's going to have late, so I'm just going to go ahead and do my next comic corner. Okay, next video.